Starship has always been a shining point that space enthusiasts like us enjoy observing and following. But there's another group that's very interested in this giant spacecraft. That's the United States military. The early 2024 news about the Department of Defense wanting to own Starship to serve the government shows that they are not concerned about flying to Mars or expanding Elon Musk's consciousness or anything similar in space. Instead, they see a potential machine for their own military plans, including the ability to move quickly from one point to another on Earth. And we know that the Air Force always has a crazy demand for SpaceX's Starship variants. Let's explore today's episode with Alpha Tech to find out why. The Department of Defense recently discussed Starship's capabilities at the Space Mobility Conference, expressing interest in its potential to revolutionize national security. SpaceX senior advisor Gary Henry emphasized that Starship's primary purpose is to reach Mars. Rocket cargo point-to-point -point is not the reason we're building Starship, he said. We're building Starship to get to Mars, but what we're finding is it's a system we're putting together that has profound impacts for national security, and one of them just happens to be rocket point-to-point. However, it has also become evident that the rocket's features have profound implications for military operations. So, what features of Starship are attracting U.S. military officials? Starship's quite unlike any rocket that's come before it. When operational, its size, payload capacity, and ability to land and fly again, as well as the number of vehicles that'll be constructed, will eclipse anything built over the last 70 years of spaceflight. First, we must mention the rapid transport capabilities of Starship. The driving force behind this is the military's ability to use the rocket to deliver supplies, and perhaps even troops in the future, to anywhere in the world in under an hour. Pentagon officials began considering this idea two decades ago, but it's only with the advent of Starship that this has moved closer to reality. Envision a number of containers sitting in a warehouse down in Cape Canaveral. We go to an alert level. We pull them up, you start putting them on the rocket, said Gregory Spangers, chief scientist for the U.S. Air Force Research Lab. At each suggestive alert level, your time to launch shrinks, shrinks, and shrinks, and we can get it down to an hour. Spangers said teams have already been making mock-ups of Starship's cargo bay, figuring out how to take advantage of a quick supply run. Speed's the obvious drop, but the cost is dropping and getting closer to existing expenses for moving supplies. The Starship Super Heavy system will be fully reusable, unlike any rockets currently flying. The Super Heavy booster, similar to SpaceX's current Falcon 9 fleet, will return to the launch site. However, unlike the Falcon 9, Super Heavy can be caught by the launch tower, stacked onto a new Starship, refueled, and relaunched rapidly. Coupled with its design, Starship has significantly reduced costs for SpaceX. Henry said SpaceX's current fleet of Falcon 9 rockets with boosters originally designed to fly 10 times, but with future boosters, that might go up as many as 40 times, have brought the price of flying payloads from about 4,500 per pound to about 900 per pound. The Falcon 9s has a capacity of 44,000 pounds to 132,000 pounds. But Starship is a very different animal, he said. Starship's fundamentally meant to be rapidly reusable. We designed the vehicle from the outset to fly 100 times, not 10 times, and it's going to deliver 220,000 to 250,000 pounds, 100 to 115 metric tons, to low Earth orbit. He said that Starship would bring the cost trajectory down to a starting point of $90 per pound. Musk has said he could see that dropping even more to $9 a pound down the road. If achieved, this means that one launch of Starship would cost less than a thousandth of the closest equivalent rocket deployed, NASA's space launch system. Henry said their price is close to what one gets using a C-17 cargo plane transport, the supply workhorse of the military, but with flights that take hours instead of minutes. Next is the frequency factor that SpaceX plans for launches. The launch frequency of Starship depends on the scale of building a massive fleet of spacecraft by SpaceX. SpaceX envisions building as many as a thousand Starships, consisting of different variants. In the years to come, they'll launch dozens, even hundreds of Starships, and eventually thousands of Starships each year. And if just assuming you have a rapidly reusable system that could, let's say, launch twice a day from a single launch base, you're going to find very, very quickly we're going to run out of places to launch, Henry said. Right now, SpaceX has one usable launch tower at Starbase in Texas, but it's already building out more. Steel girders constructed at SpaceX's Kennedy Space Center facilities were loaded Wednesday on a barge to make their way to Starbase. SpaceX is also building out a Starship launch tower at KSC. To meet its launch plans, it'll need multiple launch towers from its existing launch sites at KSC, Texas, and California. But SpaceX could spread its footprint to new launch sites down the line as well, and that could feed into point-to-point -point plans the military is interested in, Henry said. 
I think the answer we're going to need to both as a company, but also as a nation to fully leverage Starship, he said. We're going to need a proliferation of launch sites within the continental U.S. and maybe even globally to fully capture this. The actions of the U.S. military and SpaceX regarding new launch sites have also begun with initial steps. Recently, on February 16th, the U.S. Air Force, alongside collaborating agencies FAA, NASA, and the U.S. Coast Guard, began conducting environmental impact studies for launch pads for SpaceX's heavy-class Starship rockets, according to a recent statement from them. The Space Force, a part of the U.S. Air Force, similar to how the U.S. Marine Corps is for the U.S. Navy, has proposed three options for additional launch towers for Starship. Option 1. SpaceX would modify and utilize SLC-37 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Option 2. SpaceX and CCSFS would construct a new pad, SLC-50, between the current SLC-37 and SLC-40. Option 3. No action, where no Starship constructions or launches would occur from CCSFS. The decision will be deliberated among the agencies in four scheduled meetings in March 2024, so stay tuned for those significant decisions. It's one of the facets of China's growing space program that is starting to outpace the U.S. During a talk at the conference, Space Force Intelligence Analyst Chief Master Sergeant Ronald Lurch with Space Systems Command said China was beginning to build out more launch sites and advance their rocket types to try and catch up to the U.S. There's a bottleneck that they need to alleviate, so they're doing something about it, he said, noting that it performed its first sea launch in the South China Sea as well. He also noted that their price points are projected to fall within China's Long March 5 rocket, flying at around $1,360 per pound, but the Long March 9 rocket's aiming to be completely reusable, with a price cut in half down to $680 a pound. China is moving very, very close. It is full speed ahead in terms of reusability, he said. And that, too, is relying on commercial launches, not just government rockets. This thrust feeds into China's stance as a superpower in space as it continues to build out its low-Earth orbit space station and has plans to pursue a crewed lunar lander before the end of the decade. On top of any sort of lunar competition, China's saber-rattling in terms of trying to reunify with Taiwan has the U.S. military concerned. Right now, we have a very aggressive adversary, said Space Force Colonel Nathan Vosters, Director for Requirements, Resources, and Programs for the Indo-Pacific Region. He said the ability for rapid delivery to that part of the world ties directly to ensuring a free and open region, which generates 60% of the world's gross domestic product. This technology, I think, has the advantage to both promote and continue free and open Indo-Pacific while also contributing directly to the war fight if and when that time would come, he said. At the very least, this changes the calculus problem a little bit for our adversaries in the region. Spanger said getting over the technological hurdle that Starship is attempting is essential, but everyone on the board felt it was just a matter of time. I hope we see successful demonstration here very quickly, he said. I think we're all in your corner because it advances where we're going. Space has long emerged as a strategic battlefield of paramount importance for every nation. The U.S. is no exception. No longer confined to battles on land, sea, or air, the 21st century has ushered in an era where control and dominance in outer space have become imperative for national security. As nations vie for strategic advantage beyond the confines of Earth, the stage is set for a new era of competition and cooperation in the cosmos. For the U.S. military, the desire for the world's largest spacecraft starship is not new. They've long anticipated the potential and advantages that the spacecraft could bring to their military objectives. As starship becomes increasingly refined and proven, the U.S. military is developing bolder plans for its use. One of these plans involves conducting thousands of SpaceX flights every year. To achieve this, in addition to requiring SpaceX to prepare a significant amount of hardware, the U.S. military also needs hundreds of Mechazilla launch towers. All this is aimed at increasing the presence of military bases launching into space. Remember that when assessing a nation's military strength, not to mention its weapons, military bases are the most important factor for determining a country's power. The U.S. military has about 700 to 850 military bases across the world. Large bases, simply referred to as bases, are defined as military installations that cover an area larger than 4 hectares, or 10 acres, or have a value exceeding $10 million. These bases typically accommodate more than 200 U.S. military personnel. According to the U.S.'s foreign bases, 439, which accounts for 60%, fall under this category. Small bases, or lily pads. These bases are smaller than 4 hectares, 10 acres, or have a value of less than $10 million. These include cooperative security locations and forward operating sites. The remaining 40% of U.S. foreign bases fall under this category. 
Just linking the largest military bases would require approximately 90 launch towers. Meanwhile, as of February 2023, the estimated cost of SpaceX's Mechazilla launch towers is less than $100 million each. This cost hasn't significantly increased, even with the addition of the water deluge system. The metal segments of the launch towers are not expensive, and the towers are equipped with robotic arms and the necessary power systems to operate them. The U.S. military is evidently considering thousands of flights per year, utilizing SpaceX's Starship and potentially hundreds of Mechazilla launch facilities. Therefore, the construction of 100 Mechazilla launch tower bases would amount to approximately $10 billion quite minimal compared to other military expenditures. On the other hand, if each starship is flown twice per day for cargo, then a fleet of 20 starships amounting to 40 flights per day would total about 14,000 flights a year. 20 starships would necessitate approximately 120 SpaceX Raptor engines. If the starships could only fly 100 times before requiring a major refit or replacement, then they would need replacement or refit every two months. A mass-produced starship with an estimated cost of 250 grand per engine would amount to approximately four to $10 million each. As of January, 2022, the Boeing C-17 Globemaster III military jet is priced at around $340 million. Even with an annual cost of 24 to $60 million for refitting or replacing starships, they'd still be far more cost-effective and quicker compared to the C-17 Globemaster III. The C-17 incurs an operating cost of about $22,000 an hour and has a payload capacity of 85 tons. In contrast, the SpaceX Starship can carry two to three times the payload capacity and would travel 15 to 30 times faster than the C-17. This implies that the SpaceX Starship could accomplish 40 to 80 times the task of the Globemaster in an hour, justifying a transport system cost of up to $800,000 an hour. This is also the unique advantage that makes Starship a top priority choice for the high-speed point-to-point transportation program called Rocket Cargo. In early 2022, the U.S. Air Force awarded SpaceX a $102 million five-year contract as part of what it calls the Rocket Cargo Program. This program is intended to study how SpaceX could transport military cargo on its launch vehicles using cargo containers compatible with other modes of transportation. The contract included an option for a demonstration of that cargo delivery capability. Two years into the effort, the military's interest is strong as ever. We looked at this for seven years and it never made sense, recalled Gregory Spaniers, chief scientist at the Air Force Research Lab, ARFL. Looking back at the start of the rocket cargo program, but as we started digging into it, we found that the business case and the cost had changed dramatically. At the Space Mobility Conference held in Orlando, Florida last month, he participated in a panel discussion concerning the rocket cargo initiative. This program, he explained, adopts a three-pronged approach to assess military viability of swift cargo delivery via rockets, the associated costs, and the technical hurdles. While much attention understandably gravitates towards technical intricacies, encompassing both rocket functionality and efficient cargo transportation methods, he emphasized the critical necessity for rapid rocket readiness. Unlike current tactically responsive launch systems, the envisaged rockets must be primed for launch within an hour. Additionally, the cargo containers must not only align with terrestrial intermodal systems, but also shield the cargo from the harsh conditions of space travel. He suggested that those studies had turned up no showstoppers for rocket cargo so far. We we're pretty tightly focused on developing a system that can go to an IOC, initial operating capability, as soon as possible, he said. Gary Henry, senior advisor for the National Security Space Solutions at SpaceX, was similarly upbeat about the prospects of using Starship for cargo delivery. Starship is fundamentally meant to be a rapidly reusable, fully reusable launch vehicle, he said. It'll put us on a cost trajectory that'll begin at $200 a kilogram. You'll see if Elon gets his way, and the marginal cost of fuel is the single biggest driver of cost for one of these launches, he added. We're talking about $20 a kilogram and below to low Earth orbit. That would make it, he argues, cost competitive with air freight. Four companies, DHL, FedEx, UPS, and the U.S. Postal Service, provide expedited shipping from the U.S. to China and the Western Pacific. He cited prices they offered of about $33 a kilogram for shipping cargo in two to five days. Do you think if you could deliver that same package 10 times faster, you might be able to sell it for $33 a kilogram? I think so. Starship, Henry noted, is not designed specifically for point-to-point cargo delivery, but in that role could offer other significant capabilities. Starship could land with 30 metric tons of cargo with the potential to increase that over time and offer a cargo base similar in volume to a C-17 aircraft. 
Others on the panel representing different Defense Department offices sounded even more optimistic about rocket cargo. It's a disruptive technology for the Air Force. That's my number one recommendation to senior leadership about investment priorities when it comes to supporting the joint warfighting concept, said Colonel Gabe Arrington, chief of the Disruptive Technology Division of the Air Force. This technology, I think, has the opportunity to both promote a continued free and open Indo-Pacific while also contributing directly to the warfight if and when that time comes, said Colonel Nathan Vosters, Director of Requirements, Resources, and Programs for U.S. Space Force Indo-Pacific. At the very least, this changes the calculus for our adversaries in the region. But what about the part of the U.S. military charged with cargo transportation? This could become another option, said Air Force Colonel Christopher Seaman, Chief of the Strategy Division at U.S. Transportation Command, or U.S. Transcom. It's intriguing to see why we care. He said more work was needed to better understand the end-to-end -end concept, like pre-positioning cargo at launch sites so it can be ready for launch quickly, and then after landing, getting the cargo to military forces. I don't think we're there on how the overall concept would work. Conversations are starting to occur to get a good idea of it. The program also needs a cost-benefit analysis. In the near term, no one's getting around the fact that it's expensive, he said. I think in the near term, it's going to be reserved for missions that are very particular, very high-end, very exquisite. But before becoming the ultimate key for the U.S. military, SpaceX needs to fly extensively and regularly. With plans to launch nine times in 2024 alone, SpaceX will be quite busy not only preparing rocket hardware, but also needing multiple launch towers from its existing launch sites at KSC, Texas, and California. Besides, SpaceX could spread its footprint to new launch sites down the line as well, and that could feed into point-to-point -point plans the military is interested in, Henry said. I think the answer is we're going to need both as a company, but also as a nation to fully leverage Starship, he said. We're going to need a proliferation of launch sites within the continental U.S. and maybe even globally to fully capture this. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.